This part is 3D printed stainless steel. No, not plastic filament with 2% of steel particles. It's actually real steel and it's super heavy. But how does it compare to other 3D printing processes and materials? Welcome to Vector3D. My name's Adam and I think it's time for some testing. As you might imagine, 3D printed stainless steel is not a cheap process. So a big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and providing all of the parts used for testing. Although famously known for their PCB manufacturing capabilities, JLC PCB do also provide 3D printing services. Simply upload your file, select your material and quantity, your parts will be produced and then shipped to you. Check them out at jlcpcb.com forward slash 3D dash printing or follow the link in the description. These stainless steel parts are made from a metallic powder using a process called selective laser melting. Today I'm going to compare this one to other 3D printing processes, multi-jet fusion, selective laser sintering, stereolithography and fused deposition modelling to get a better understanding of their advantages and disadvantages. So let's have a closer look at each of the contenders. Firstly, we have stereolithography or SLA for short. This is a resin printing process that uses a laser to cure the photosensitive material. For testing today, I'm using an LEDO 6060 made by Somos. Next up is fused deposition modeling or FDM for short. This is the filament based extrusion process, which many hobbyists will already be familiar with. The material I'm using today is ABS, which can come in a variety of colors, but these parts from JLC PCB are all black. Next we have selective laser sintering or SLS for short. This is a powder based fusion process that uses a laser to melt and fuse the powder together. The material I'm using here is a polyamide material, also known as nylon. The penultimate process is multi-jet fusion or MJF for short. This is another powder bed fusion process that jets a fusing agent onto the powder, which is then cured using the application of energy, probably infrared. This material, PA12, is another polyamide nylon based material. The last process is selective laser melting or SLM for short also known as direct metal laser sintering or DMLS. This is another powder bed fusion process, this time using a high powered laser to melt and fuse a metal powder. The material I'm using is 316L stainless steel. Now that we're all familiar with the processes and materials, let's get on with the testing. For the first test, I wanted to see if electricity could pass through the materials, such as for using in an electrical circuit, or if they were an insulator, which could be better for an electrical enclosure. I designed a very simple 5 by 5 mm cuboid, 120 mm long, which I tested for continuity to see if it was conductive, and then resistance for the materials that were. Unsurprisingly, all of the polymer materials, Lido 6060, ABS, PA-F and PA-12 all failed the continuity test, showing that no electricity would flow through these samples. The SLM stainless steel, however, did have continuity from end to end. The resistance was 0.3 ohms, making the overall resistivity of the material 0.00006 ohm meters. Next, I moved on to weight, because if using these parts in structural or motion applications, the weight is an important parameter. The test part for this was the Voron V0 carriage modification for using LGX light. The lightest part in the lineup was the ABS at just 7.5 grams, followed by both nylon contenders in the 9.5 gram region and then resin at just over 10 grams. The SLM stainless steel was by far the heaviest at a massive 73 grams. I also wanted to test how dense the stainless steel was, so I weighed the most uniform sample, which was the conductivity test, and compared it to a calculated value for its weight based on its density. I found that assuming the density to be 8000 kilograms per meter cubed, the 3D printed part is about 92% steel. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I was also curious about how flexible these materials were, so the next test was flexural rigidity, 
Basically, it's resistant to bending. The print for this was a thin 3mm beam, 20mm wide, with a hole in the end for a hook. The least rigid material was the 3201PA-F, with a maximum deflection at 10 newtons of 45mm. The most rigid was steel, maybe unsurprisingly, with a maximum of just 1mm. In the middle group we have, from least to most rigid, PA12 nylon, ABS, and then the Ledo 6060 resin. By the way, if you find 3D printing videos like this one interesting, don't forget to subscribe. It costs you nothing and you can always unsubscribe later if it's not for you. Next, I did a print accuracy test. For this, I used my Califlower design and used the calibration sheet, measuring with some decent quality calipers to determine the accuracy and skew. Looking at print accuracy first, the results are the percentage error compared to the true dimension. I've taken the absolute value of error rather than the true value so that they're all positive and therefore easier to compare. SLA resin and FDM have the worst results here, coming in around 0.35% error on average, and SLS has the best results with 0.07% error on average. Strangely, the MJF process has a large difference between the accuracy on X and on Y. It's merely speculation here on my behalf, but perhaps this is to do with the spread of the ejected bonding material in the direction of motion of the gantry. When it comes to skew, it can be hard to know what is good and what's not. So as a reference, Prusa suggests that for the Mark III, anything over 0.25 degrees is severe and needs calibrating. For these machines, the worst result we saw was 0.1 degrees from the MJF process, and the best was the SLM steel with only 0.02 degrees of skew. The remaining machines were all similar and performed very well with around 0.04 to 0.05 degrees of skew. The next test was very much a practical assembly test where I determined what temperature range is needed for adding threaded inserts, such as with the vertical linear motion press which you can get now from vector3d.co.uk. The Ledo 6060 resin needed the lowest temperature allowing for decent insertion at just 150 degrees Celsius. ABS worked a little at 150 but required a lot of force and worked then fine at 200. Both the nylons needed a lot of force at 200 but were fine at 250. The stainless steel sample didn't take threaded inserts at all. I tried up to 400 degrees Celsius and it was just nothing, which I guess realistically is not surprising. The other thermal test I did was a heat deflection test. I took a 130mm length, 3mm thick beam of each sample and applied a force in the centre with a 30 gram weight. For the heating I used a standard home convection oven, literally my oven in my kitchen. The resin failed very early on at the minimum dial temperature. ABS failed in its expected range around 110 degrees Celsius and both nylons failed similarly around the 200 degrees Celsius mark. The SLM 3D printed steel did not deform at all. It was solid and largely unaffected by the entire test, even up to maximum oven temperature. Interestingly, the resin never really failed as such, as it's not a thermoplastic, it doesn't actually melt, but it did go very soft and became kind of springy material, and then just stayed like that up to and beyond 100 degrees Celsius. We can also see from the video footage that the 3201PA-F actually failed a little bit before the PA-12, but only by a few degrees. Lastly, a comparison of price. While other tests had specific parts, this is just the sum of the cost of all the parts used in all the other tests. In my testing, SLA with Ledo 6060 resin was the cheapest at just £12.47, while SLM was unsurprisingly the most expensive at a whopping £150.43. What may surprise you is that FDM ABS was actually more expensive than both MJF and SLS. Maybe this is impacted by ABS being a slower and more linear process. I'm not sure, but it's worth bearing in mind for your next major project if you intend to outsource some 3D printing. So in conclusion, I've certainly learned a lot from running these tests on these five materials and processes used in 3D printing, so hopefully you have too. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.